order to survive, the nuclear industry have to find a way of getting rid of their high-level nuclear waste. And various plans have been advanced in the last 10-15 years. Uh, and so, f and up till now, nobody has succeeded in figuring out a way of doing this. This stuff is terribly radioactive, and of course, if it gets out, which it eventually will, it's going to cause all sorts of problems in the environment, including, you know, uh, killing people. So the latest uh, development in the nuclear industry's attempt to deal with this problem and to have a future, because this is the only future it will have, is to um, depend upon the Swedish uh, proposal uh, by a company called SKB to bury it under the um, Baltic Sea at a place called Forsmark in Sweden, on the, on the eastern coast of Sweden, on the Baltic coast. And the proposal is to bury it 500 meters underneath the Baltic Sea on the coast in rock caverns. And the material itself will be encased in copper canisters. And inside the copper canisters are, are, are iron, iron canisters with holes drilled in them to take the waste. So what they're going to do is they're going to put the nuclear waste from the nuclear reactor, after allowing it to cool down a bit in ponds, into, into uh, cylindrical or, or, or uh, square section tubes inside an iron cylinder which is then encased in a copper cylinder and this is then placed inside the, um, inside the repository 500 meters underneath the Baltic Sea. Now the Swedish government acting through the Swedish Radiological Protection Agency SSM has required that the, that, that the company um, provides an environmental impact statement get out into the Baltic or into the environment for a hundred thousand years, okay? hundred thousand years. Now the amount of material is enormous. You have um, about 12,000 tons of nuclear waste ultimately, which consists of about 10 to the 20 becquerels of, um, 10 to the power 20 becquerels of material, about 1.4 times 10 to the 19 becquerels of alpha emitters like plutonium and uranium and neptunium stuff that lasts for a very long time. I mean, you know, millions of years. Uranium, for example. So you've got uranium mixed in with all of this stuff. Now the way this is going to be done is the material is going to be taken from the nuclear sites themselves and then transshipped to another, another a site called um, Oskarshamn, which is south of Sweden, also on the Baltic coast. And at Oskarshamn, the uh, material, the high-level nuclear waste, is going to be um, put under water to cool down for a bit, and then it's going to be put into these canisters at, at, uh, at Oskarshamn, and then transshipped to Forsmark, where it's going to be buried in the ground in these caverns. The, the copper cylinders um, are then going to be put in the holes drilled into the rock, and then the whole business is going to be filled up with bentonite clay, which is a sort of, uh, sort of clay, uh, and the idea is that this is going to uh, be isolated from the environment for a million years. Okay, a million years. And in fact, the, the, the modelling um, which SKB has done over about 20 years, incidentally, this, is, this has been going on for a very long time and has involved millions and millions of, of euros worth of work. And lots and lots of scientists have been studying this stuff and, and, and creating these computer models, one of which is called Pandora, incidentally, quite appropriately. Um, this uh, environmental impact statement was presented um, some months ago, and there is uh, a, an application to the Environmental Court in Sweden to ask if there are any more pieces of information or any more details that are required before the uh, environmental court makes a decision. Anyway, the point is it has to be isolated and the model says that it is isolated from the environment for a million years, for a hundred thousand years anyway. Well, I studied this stuff. I looked very closely at the documents. The enormous quantity of material, incidentally, three DVDs. So you're talking about megabytes worth of information, which you have to sort of go through line by line. But anyway, this is the kind of thing I do. And what I found was really quite extraordinary and probably one of the most exciting and interesting things that I have ever done, uh, which I'm now going to tell you about. Because what I, what I have succeeded in doing is showing, in my opinion, well, no, not in my opinion, just showing definitely that 
they can't do this. And the reason they can't do this is because of something that they have entirely overlooked. Really some simple thing, a really schoolboy mistake that's been made here. And it has to do with helium, helium gas. Now helium uh, is a, a material that is a noble gas, it's an element, um, and it's created from alpha particles, uh, which are the radioactive decay products of many of these radionuclides. Plutonium is an alpha emitter, neptunium is an alpha emitter, americium is an alpha emitter, uranium is an alpha emitter, lots and lots of this stuff which has been going to be put which they're going to put into the repository are alpha emitters. So what you can do is you can look at all the alpha emitters and and uh, rather than seeing them as radiation, which is what they do, see them as helium gas. And so it's quite easy to multiply all of these um, decays because in the report it says how much material they're going to put in there. You know, 1.4 times 10 to the 19 becquerels. That's 1.4 times 10 to the 19 disintegrations per second. Okay, 10 to the 19 is one and 19 zeros. And, th and this stuff is so radioactive that when they fill this repository up, there's going to be one and 19 zeros disintegrations per second, per second. And that's one and 19 zeros numbers of alpha, uh, of, of, of helium atoms. Well, of course, it's a simple matter as a chemist, which is what I used to be long ago, to show how much gas that, 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 that produces. And actually it produces in, in 100,000 years, which is the requirement of the Swedish government that these things are intact for 100,000 years, you're talking about 300,000 litres of helium per cylinder. So the pressure of the cylinder is going to be very high. It's going to be about 300 atmospheres and the cylinders are going to explode. In fact, they'll explode long before 100,000 years is up. They'll explode quite early on. And in fact, if we assume that there's about a 90% um, filling fraction for the nuclear waste into the cylinders themselves. So in other words, they take up about 90% of the space. These cylinders will explode round about 800 years after they've been put into the ground. And what will that do? Well, it will contaminate the Baltic Sea with approximately 2,000 Chernobyl accidents. Okay? So we know the quantity there, and we can divide out by the number of, uh, material, the number of becquerels that were released by the Chernobyl accident. So in terms of uh, strontium-90, for example, it's 2,000 times worse than the Chernobyl accident. In terms of plutonium, it's probably 2 million times worse than the Chernobyl accident. In terms of cesium, it's 80 times. So you've got, in terms of cesium, 80 times the Chernobyl accident suddenly appearing in the book. And this will continue. because these, these are going to explode and contaminate the Baltic. So all of their calculations are wrong. 20 years of work is, is wasted and the enormous salaries that they paid to all the scientists who did all this work are, are wasted. And uh, I had to have a good laugh. And so do you. Anyway, what I want you to do is to write to the Swedish government, write to the environmental court, write to anybody, you know, Swedish members of parliament, whatever, and point out that, that according to these calculations, and I've had them checked by my colleague at the University of London, so I think they're probably right, that um, these calculations show that they can't go ahead with the force mark repository. And apart from anything else, even if these calculations weren't right, there are all sorts of other problems associated with this development, all of which I have put into a big paper which I wrote, which you will find on the website of the of the Swedish anti-nuclear movement, which is nonuclear.org, or nonuclear.se is what it's called. Anyway, I'll put the stripe up for you. And you'll also find it on bsrrw.org, bsrrw.org. And here I am in France on my boat having a good laugh about all of this. And possibly this is one of the most important things that I've done in my life. Quite accidentally, incidentally, it wasn't very difficult. It just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Hurrah. Thank you for listening.